Alec Craig was born in 1897 in a very modest home and was apprenticed at the age of 16 as a boy clerk into the British civil service. It might have seemed that his path in life was set and in fact he stayed in the civil service until 1962 when he retired as a senior civil servant. However, after his experiences on the Western Front in the First World War, Craig became a very passionate and committed libertarian and campaigned on a very wide range of social issues, including the decriminalisation of homosexuality and abortion and the reform of divorce law. However, he's most clearly associated with the cause of the abolition of literary censorship in the UK. He published four books, either chiefly or solely on this topic, and he gave evidence to the House of Commons Committee, which eventually gave rise to the Obscene Publications Act of 1959, which implemented many of the reforms Craig had campaigned for. He also was a published poet, publishing four volumes of poetry during his lifetime, as well as numerous articles, and was also an inveterate letter writer. Craig ultimately had around 3,000 books when he died, but even around the 500 or so that are in Senate House Library, there are works on church history and local history, as well as the theoretical study of sexuality and erotic or censored books for which he's most famous. He collected them partly to exchange information with others who were interested in the same topics as him. He exchanged huge amounts of bibliographic information by post with correspondents all around the world. And he also collected in order to preserve the books that were under direct threat of physical destruction by the obscenity laws. I think there's a temptation when we look at the Craig collection to congratulate ourselves on being a great deal more enlightened than the society in which Craig found himself. I think we need to be very careful um, before we just construct an argument that now we are a more accepting, more tolerant society. Certainly the lines of toleration have moved. Um, it might seem strange to contemporary readers that the works of Oscar Wilde or J.K. Huisman would be in the Craig collection and subject to censorship. But there are also works in Craig's library that are perhaps that are perhaps less tolerated today than they would have been in his time. For example, Craig bought the novels of Henry Miller and believed that the only reason there may be any restriction on reading those was because they were sexually explicit. Now, while they're not banned today by any means, the novels of Henry Miller are largely overlooked because of their unsettling sexual politics and their misogyny. We certainly haven't lost the feeling that works of literature or works of art can have a negative effect on human behaviour. Rather than hearing about the corruption of the morals of youth, we now hear more perhaps about fears of violence and violent behaviour being caused by such works. But I think we need to acknowledge that there is still a line that society likes to draw between that which is acceptable and that which isn't acceptable. And perhaps the drawing of that line is more important than what's on either side of it. I think we also need to bear in mind that there can be a strong element of hypocrisy in some of this. And I'm reminded of Craig's last book, where he said very wisely, we are all tempted to be readers of erotic books and censors of sexual literature.